All right, so we are recording. Awesome. I'm so excited to finally be sharing this information. Yeah, we had a little technical difficulty last video and it didn't work out, but here we come. We're back again. Mercury retrograde, right? Mercury so, retrograde. Yeah, it, it's a real thing. It's amazing. So I wanted to talk about um, personal energy and how we can protect our personal energy. But in order to have that conversation, I'd like to just get into some background information because there might be people listening that don't don't know all the details. So I wanted to start with the law of attraction and vibration. So everything is energy, as we know, and it can't be created or destroyed. So everything that's alive has a vibrational frequency and nothing is actually solid. It just vibrates at different speeds. So the speed of that vibration then in turn will determine the frequency. So we can effectively tell how fast our vibration is by our emotional set point. And what that is, it's our inner vibration and it determines the frequency that we connect to on the outside. And that in essence is the secret to the law of attraction right there. Um, because low vibrations such as fear, anger, et cetera, will keep us vibrating at a low frequency and therefore we'll experience in our lives low frequency manifestations. So the opposite would also be true. The better we feel, the higher our vibration is. And this is when we start manifesting our true desires. Humans vibrate naturally, high, uh, a natural high vibration um, we have when we come into the world. Joy is our natural frequency. So to get back to the higher vibrations, we have to work on getting rid of whatever's not in alignment with our true self. So that's shedding anything that doesn't feel good. Um, there's three things that we could try to do in our everyday lives that will help raise our vibration. One is to stop gossiping. Speaking negative attracts negativity in the form of people and conversations. Um, so we're attracting what we don't want. So we have to keep an eye on things like judgment and labels. Also negative programming, the fear, the stress, the worry, when we're stuck in fear, we, uh, we stay at a low vibration and we attract what we're afraid of, the things we're worried about and the events, events happen that are on the same vibration. So in essence, we are responsible for our own reality through the law of attraction. So and the third thing is people in situations that leave you stressed out, overwhelmed or less than happy. So we need to limit the interactions that we have with these people until we can learn how to not let them affect our vibration. So the one warning that I have for doing work like this is that it's not easy and it can be painful. Um, you, we may lose family or friends in the process. It doesn't have to be a forever loss, but when you raise your vibration, you'll start to naturally back away from people, situations and activities that don't align with your vibration. Um, you just don't resonate with a lot of people anymore. Uh, I think unconsciously, a lot of people, um, they can feel that our vibration has changed. And you'll end up having urges to not do things you used to do or start doing new things that you've never done before. Um, so it can be uncomfortable because it's not familiar. Um, and you eventually will align with your natural high vibration through, through doing these practices. And it will become your new normal. But we all, we all have fluctuations in our vibration. We're influenced by the world around us. And, you know, in time, we learn to react differently um, to the, the incoming uh, vibrations that are not aligned with us. And we don't end up staying in a low vibration for long because we're aware of it. So, so in, when, when you're talking about, um, like, changing your vibration and... Um, like resonating with other vibrations, how do we know like what our vibration is? And what do we mean when we're talking about like positive vibrations, raising our energy? What are we talking about? How do we tell what our energy is and how do we raise it? Okay. So if our thinking patterns tend to go to things that we're afraid of, things we're worried about, if we if we catch ourselves thinking, I won't be able to do that, that's out of my reach, any kind of lack, 
uh, lack mentality, victim mentality, um, being overly afraid of things in your environment. Um, a little bit of fear is natural because that's our natural protection system that just makes us intelligent and it makes our body doing what our brain doing what it's designed to do. But if we find ourselves going back to those subjects and worrying about them and, you know, repetitive thinking on things that don't make us feel good, that's when we know that we need to figure out a way to hire our vibration because our natural way is joy. You know, so we should be feeling peace, contentment, joy, happiness um, on a regular basis. That's how we're designed to be. Okay. So if we find ourselves in that fear mode or with worry or thoughts of lack or I can't do that or um, kind of dark thoughts, we're in a lower vibration. Mm -hmm. And then we're trying, yeah. we're trying to raise our vibration to what it, what it naturally is. Exactly. Which is so what we, happiness and peace. It is. Yes, it's joy, happiness, and peace. Um, we are creating our realities based on these feelings and these thoughts that we have. So in order to get ourselves out of this repeating reality that we don't want, we have to learn how to change those thinking patterns. The best thing to do, especially when you're first beginning, because you have so much momentum behind those thinking patterns, is to not think about those subjects at all. As soon as you catch yourself thinking about it, try to drop it and think about something that does make you happy. And then you get into a habit of doing that and it starts to become second nature where you catch yourself. You know, because it's okay to have experiences i mean that's what we're here for that's how we create we experience contrast and we decide i don't want that i do want that and that's what puts our desires out into the universe so in order for the law of attraction to to assist us what we need to do is we need to play along with it and try to get rid of those uh, you know those upcoming negative thoughts and pat you know thinking patterns and your emotions are the best way to tell so if you feel less or, you know, then content, peaceful, you know, happy, joyful, you know, then you know that you need to do some work. That makes a lot of sense. It's yeah. Like our emotions are like a barometer. They are. And that's what we have them for. They're actually a guide for us. There is a reason that we feel our, our emotions so strongly. So that brings us into personal energy. So um, the basics of that is that everything alive has an energetic field um, or an aura. Then they extend uh, feet from our body. So they will actually bump into each other, mix with each other. So other people's energies can affect our field. And this is especially difficult for people who, you know, are true empaths. So there's not as many true empaths as we may think. Um, the way people feel energy um, is by confusion in their aura, and they think that they mistake that for natural, natural empathy. Natural empathy is somebody who has the ability to wrap their aura around somebody else. So that person might get confused as to where they stop and the other person begins. People will usually feel extremely comfortable with them, but they get overwhelmed easily. That is not what I'm talking about. Most of us, almost all of us, are affected by other people's energy in some way, shape, or form. Um, that doesn't make us an empath, that just makes us human. So the confusion in our aura that, that we feel is, um, you know, it's confusing because we're not taught about our energetic fields and how to take care of it. Um, that's where we store our negative experiences, our traumas, and the things that we don't deal with correctly. Um, and this causes disease. This is the, the actual cause for disease, um, which is a, just another conversation. But so we, it's important to protect our energy for our mental, physical, and spiritual well-being. Um, so you said that there was some confusion? Yes. People... A lot of people have no idea that that's why they're so overwhelmed. They don't realize that energetically they're taking on other people's emotions or that 
other people's negativity is blending with their aura because they're in such close proximity. And another thing is that so if, human if, if they don't, if, I'm sorry, but if they don't know that that's what's happening, what do what do you what do people generally think is happening? They either don't know or they assume that it's there's something wrong with them you know depression anxiety they think it's coming from them and a lot of times they can't even identify why they feel the way they do okay. well this is because they haven't learned that it's not even their emotions it's not even them because humans naturally will gravitate and alter their energy towards the strongest energy in their area so whether it's high vibe or low vibe, most human beings will naturally match that energy without even realizing that they're doing it, like a moth to a flame. Oops, turning off lights so you can't see me. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, it's interesting the way that it works with the, uh, the fact that, you know, we walk into a room and if the energy, you know, if it's, if it's a party and everyone's happy, we will normally rise our energy. Our energy will rise to that vibration where, you know, we feel the vibe going on. We've all had that experience in concerts and, you know, family parties where, you know, the vibe gets really high and you, you have a great time. You automatically rise to joy and you have a great time. But then there's those experiences where you walk into a room after an argument and you have no idea why, but all of a sudden now you're miserable and you can't explain why. <laughs> so paying attention to our surroundings, paying attention to our body, the way we feel when we change our environment really helps to keep track of whether or not this is, you know, our energy or somebody else's that we're taking on. Hmm. So, yeah, there's a lot of information in here. Um, that I'm, that I'm giving, and this is just the, you know, a basic layout of it. Um, you know, so I'm available and open to have conversations about each of these subjects in more depth in the future, but I wanted to just get to some basic practices that people can use that may help them, especially in times like this, where everything just feels so intense. Excellent. Let's dive in. Yeah, the one thing that I do is I do a bubble of light exercise. That's what I call it. Um, I close my eyes and I imagine a bubble forming around me. And visualization is one of the most important techniques that we can learn. And that bubble is protection. And it protects me from other people's energies. So I imagine my aura being surrounded by a bubble. And I'll even imagine it sometimes with lights um, colors and I imagine it to get stronger and stronger and this is something that you have to practice you have to do it sometimes a couple times a day um, until you get used to having a field of energy around you but it's your visualization and your intent you can even call in your angels um, you know whoever it is that you pray to and ask them to assist you and you just have to intend that you're protected and that no negative energy can get in and this will actually serve as a force field for us so that kind of segues into the synchronicity I was telling you about before before we Does got it so we tried to do a video last week and it didn't work out we had technical issues but um, I was at the bank the other day mm -hmm. after we had talked about protecting our energy and um, some guy drove by and was like, you effing asshole. Like uh -huh. you learn how to drive. He yelled out his window. Uh -huh. Don't you love them? <laughs> oh yeah. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I didn't do anything wrong. It was like totally random out of the blue and unjustified. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I feel it's happening to me. <laughs> yeah, and it's that energy, that negative energy coming in. It is. But, it's because uh, they're close to you. Yeah. A lot of pe people project their energies onto other people all the time. That's kind of how we, as human beings, function. That's how we learn about ourselves. We project our stuff onto other people. So it's really important for us to learn how to not take that personally and not let it affect us. Yeah. And that bubble, 
that bubble exercise that you gave would uh, sounds like a way that we could deflect that negative vibe that's coming our way. It's a great idea to do it every morning. Um, it's also a great idea to do it before you leave the house. Um, it's really important to do when you know you're going to be around people that maybe aren't high vibe and you know that they might make you miserable people that you have to be around, but you know, you don't want to be around. Um, and the more you enforce it, you know, the more you, you redo the exercise, the stronger it gets and you'll start to notice changes in your life. Things won't affect you the way they used to. Awesome. So what else did you want to cover? Did you have another exercise? I do. Um, I wanted to talk about um, thoughts and meditation. So we aren't taught about the power that we have. And most of us have no idea how powerful we really are. So our thoughts, they don't actually come from us. Um, this means that we don't actively think our thoughts. So we're programmed by our environment when we engage in a thought and we create thought patterns. So we can control this. Um, meditation is not what most people think it is. Um, it's, it's not the stopping of thoughts. Um, it's actually impossible to stop our thoughts because that's what our mind does. It thinks. It does it on autopilot without our permission. It will repeat thought patterns from the past. The ones that we've engaged with the most, it, it repeats on a pattern. So what we have to learn is to not engage with those patterns of negative thoughts so much. So this is just one of those uh, things that will help us. Um, so we pick up thought patterns that we engage with the most, but we also pick them up from the collective unconscious. So yes, uh, quantum physics states that we are all connected to um, an energy field. And this field holds the vibration of the thoughts of humanity as a whole. So if we're vibrating at a low frequency of fear, then we run the risk of potentially picking up those vibrations and thoughts from the collective field. Um, and vice versa. So if we're around people that are positive and we're in a positive vibration, we're gonna bring in positive thoughts. So like attracts like in, in this. So this is energy and it's also law of attraction. So, um, the real practice of meditation is to learn how to quiet the mind enough so that we can watch our thoughts without engaging in them. So the true self of a person is the being that watches everything we say and do that doesn't have any judgments about it. So it's just that silent watcher in the back of our head. And our ego is that mind that just runs on repeat. So when you sit there and you have that constant voice in your head, you know, that running commentary, that's your ego. So learning the difference between the two is big and practicing being quiet, calming yourself down into a meditative um, state and asking yourself, what's my next thought going to be? You're going to get a blank. Because we don't actively know what our next thought is going to be. It's just coming from the subconscious mind. Once we get to that point and we practice that, we can learn to sit back and, and be in the perspective of that viewer, our true self. And we can watch thoughts come into our head, but we don't engage with them. You can, um, when a thought comes through, you can be, you could laugh at it. You can send it love. You could watch it float by like clouds or imagine it, imagine it turn into smoke and blow away. As long as you don't engage with the thought, it, then, you know, you, it has no sway over you. And eventually the pattern will stop as long as we don't engage with it. So the interesting part about meditation is, Yes, learning to ask yourself that question, which is one of the best ways I've found to quiet my mind is asking myself, what is the, my next thought? Because you get a blank. And that's where I know where my starting point is. And then when the random thoughts come in, I just try not to engage with them. If I do, I bring myself back to, the, to, the, to my breathing, to asking myself again, what was my, what's my next thought going to be? And that blank spot. You know, and in time, 
in essence, this is what meditation is. But in time, we get good at it. And we have long spaces of time without concentrating on any thoughts at all. This is where the magic starts to happen. Yeah, so what, what does that mean? Like, what experience have you had meditating, like, over time? What has it done for you? What's the benefit, then? I now, no, I now cannot react to things as fast. So something would happen or somebody would say something to me and I'd right away react. Now I can sit back and just kind of stay out of it and not take things personally. Like I can watch things that happen outside of me like I watch those thoughts. And I can choose how I want to react to things. So over time, it, it helped me be less reactive. Um, my constant monkey mind is not going all the time. I have times where I don't even try to meditate, but I don't think about anything actively at all. It's easy to actually just be like that. So it becomes a state where most of the time you're actually in that peaceful state and you don't have all that crazy thinking going through your head constantly, which is peaceful. It's very nice. That's awesome. Sounds really powerful. It is very powerful. Um, I think a lot of people think that they can't do it because they they think that something magical is supposed to happen, but the magic is in the little things, you know? Absolutely. And it's also something that comes with practice. You get the benefits the more you practice these things. You know, None of these things are quick fixes for anything. You do it once and all of a sudden, you know, everything's great. These are daily practices that if you use over a period of time, end up becoming, you know, your best allies. All of a sudden, I, I can't hear you. Oops. It's like a, it's like an art, like painting. It is. it is. So what else did you want to share, Angela? I just wanted to, to say that we're not taught that our imagination is important. You know, we're taught that our imagination is childlike and that, you know, when you grow up and you get into the real world that, you know, your imagination, unless you're an artist, has nothing to do with your life. Our imaginations are our connection to our higher self and the beings that are available to us. So the more we practice with our imagination, the more intuition we're gonna, we're, the more we're going to pick up on our, on our intuition and the more we're going to pick up on the guidance that we get from the higher beings that are available to us. So that's really important to know. And one other thing I wanted to mention is intention is your best ally when it comes to meditation, when it comes to doing the bubble exercise, when it comes to any of that stuff. Holding a strong intention, declaring that this is how it's gonna be, will actually make it so. It's gonna feel funny at first, but intention is your most powerful, magical gift. It's like um, in the movies when you, you have to believe in Santa Claus. <laughs> yes. In order for Santa Claus to exist. Or like uh, with Tinkerbell, she dies if you don't believe in her, if you believe you clap. <laughs> <laughs> and then but this is real what we're talking about it's very real you know the funny thing is they make it like it's all uh fairy tales and 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 children's stories but the thing is a lot of it is actually based in in old truths yeah and also with the new science of physics and um other studies and things that are being done they're demonstrating the power of meditation, the power of intention, that these things are real, quantum physics, yes. everything's energy, the wave, all that. They are starting to be able to scientifically prove all of these things. Um, if anybody wants to, I have posted it in my group, but if anybody wants to start doing a little bit of research in this, Greg Braden is one of the best people you could YouTube about that. He talks about the science of belief. He talks about quantum physics and how the and about the field. That's a good place where anybody who's interested in this could um, just go right over to YouTube and you know get a start on finding out a lot of this stuff. He's a scientist. 
Greg <laughs> Greg Braden. Greg Braden. Okay. Awesome. I'll have to YouTube him. Is there anything else you'd like to share before we end the video? No, that's all. Okay. Well, thank you so much for sharing this information. It's like really useful and beneficial. People need to hear this and we all need to be practicing these techniques. Um, it's so important, I think, in today's world. With what's going on, people need to be reminded of how powerful they are and that they have control over their lives. We've been taught that we have no control over our lives, that we're not powerful, and it's a lie. <laughs> it's a lie. So the more we help people find out how powerful they are and teach them ways to take care of their personal energy, you know, the, the healthier people are going to be all around. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> all right. Well, it was a great conversation. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing. And um, I'm sure we'll be live again soon. Oh, absolutely. There's plenty more to share. Have a great day, Brandon. You too.